Welcome to our first exclusive interview for LouisvilleDrummer.com, brought to you by Lush and Photography. We're here in the Bird Recital Hall today at the University of Louisville with a very special guest, Director of Percussion, Dr. Greg Byrne. Dr. Byrne, thanks for being here with me today, sir. Thank you, Miguel. Thanks well, for having me. Well, you know, before we get started, Dr. Byrne, I'd love to hear how you got started in music. Can you tell me a little bit about when you started, how old you were, you know, and, and what got you started into music? Oh, I'd love to. It's, a, it's been quite a journey. Mm -hmm. I was fortunate to have a dad who was a drummer, mm -hmm. and when I was in fourth grade, he got me started on, on playing drums. But it, I remember so well, I actually had sticks, and I played on a book, oh, that's and, awesome. and he taught me quarter notes, and, and, and it was a, a, something at that age where I actually worked hard at and mm -hmm. felt a sense of accomplishment. Yeah. Uh, and then I got into band in the fifth grade and uh, applied what I had learned mm -hmm. and it had just blossomed from there. So I've been in band really uh, mm -hmm. all the way up, all the way through my career. Uh, well, Dr. Byrne, can you tell me a little bit about when you started to pursue education? How did you know that was what your passion was and when did you decide to pursue that? Yeah, I actually uh, realized early in life, I believe, mm -hmm. I was going into seventh grade when, when I really uh, I realized that uh, band music mm -hmm. was a part of my identity, yeah. and I wanted to uh, share that with other people. Yeah. And that's where it really got uh, uh, interesting for me. I had another whole perspective, not only being involved with music, but knowing that I wanted to get other people involved with mm -hmm. music. So in seventh grade, early. And then uh, from there, you know, of course, I stayed in band and did all kinds of musical things throughout my high school years. Yeah. But uh, then it, it came time to go to college, and that's what I pursued, a music degree. And wow. that's what I'm doing today. Oh, great. Can you tell me a little bit about where you studied yourself in college and then what happened afterwards? Sure. And uh, from there, I just I stayed in band. And again, I pursued a music ed degree at the University at Martin. Mm -hmm. And then uh, later on in life, I got a master's degree at the University of Mississippi. And of wow. course, working through all this, and mm -hmm. eventually got a degree, uh, my doctorate, in music performance at the University of Alabama. Dr. Murray, can you tell me a little bit about your responsibilities right now here at the University of Louisville? What kinds of things do you do, you do right now? This is a, I, I love what I do here. Yeah. It's, um, I, my title is Director of Percussion Studies. Mm -hmm. the, uh, my focus is all percussion. Wow. Uh, Great. I, I teach mm -hmm. uh, students and I help them achieve their goals. Yeah. They've got to have their degrees as well. Mm -hmm. And I help them achieve their goals. And, and, and um, we play mm -hmm. a lot. We contribute to ensembles and collaborate a lot with other professors here wow. in the school of music. So I'm a percussionist, but yeah. I work with composers and conductors music yeah. therapists. It's a great world to be in. Oh, that's amazing. I think a lot of people that will be watching this interview are there people that are really excited about pursuing music themselves. What's when, one way that you can encourage them to be better prepared for pursuing music? Maybe the audition process, for example. What kinds of things will you guys be looking for or any school of music when someone wants to start pursuing music in college? Excellent question. Uh, and, and hopefully people will see this and mm -hmm. get the, the idea to be prepared um, in three different areas. Yeah. One is their, their, their playing abilities. Mm -hmm. To be able to play uh, in percussion, for example, the rudiments, be able to play musically um, in, in all different areas like timpani and mallets yeah. and, and, uh, and snare drum and drum set yeah. to get their feet wet on, with, with everything. Uh, and then the other part of it is the academics. Mm -hmm. They need to have good grades. Yeah. Uh, and so there's ACT scores and there's GPAs and things mm -hmm. like that. And then the third part is their references. Mm -hmm. There's typically you have to have letters of, of reference. Mm -hmm. uh, and so you need to be able to develop uh, good personal uh, relationships with yeah. people and then they can speak highly of you. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. Dr. Murray, can you talk to me a little bit more about some of the instruments that percussionists will be studying within the percussion studio at the University of Louisville? Oh, sure. The, yeah. uh, in addition to what I call the different food groups, uh, mm -hmm. such as timpani, snare drum, mm -hmm. mallets, they'll uh, venture outside those food groups and learn other things, such as world percussion like steel drums, yeah. or African drums, or Brazilian drums, mm -hmm. a drum set, multi-percussion, a lot of marching percussion, uh, anything percussion, yeah. really, but there's different, there's different styles and techniques involved with all of them. Mm -hmm. well, that's great. Now, as these people are studying, you know, they're going to be wanting to look for resources that they can find, new information. You know, what kinds of places do you go to find new information to grow and enhance yourself as a percussionist? 
Absolutely. Well, the first place I would go to, you can do a lot of things on the website, mm -hmm. louisvilledrummer.com. That's right. Like, thank you very much. That's the first place I will go to. Well, I appreciate it. And then from there uh, mm -hmm. to, to uh, the music stores yeah. and conventions, like per, uh, percussion conventions, and yeah. find out what other people are studying, mm -hmm. what's the latest and, and the newest thing. Um, and so it helps you stay current. Yeah. But, I remember speaking with you a while back. You had actually talked about just going to the public library and how many resources are available for free through there. Absolutely. And people don't think about that. Yeah. You know, you got to buy it. Mm -hmm. But actually, you can go to the library and mm -hmm. through interlibrary loan, you can mm -hmm. get any book you want yeah. and, and study it. You know, mm -hmm. of course, you have to turn it back in, but you can check it back out. Yeah, yeah. man. Oh, totally. Now, Dr. Byrne, can you tell me a little bit about the students? What will they be studying outside of their specific instruments? What kind of expectations should they have from the School of Music? Sure. In, when you pursue a degree in, in music, it's mm -hmm. not just that instrument that you, uh, yeah. that you learn about. You learn about the mechanics of music, for example. In, in, in other words, you would take theory. Mm -hmm. You learn how certain notes fit in chord structures, and you learn different theories, like yeah. jazz theory or classical mm -hmm. theory. You learn music history. Uh, and that's an interesting uh, topic in itself because it, you deal with culture yeah. and you deal with different styles and different eras. You also learn music literature where you study the music uh, mm -hmm. in, in the different styles and, mm -hmm. and things like that. Um, piano is another thing that everybody has to take. And, uh, yeah. and so you think, um, I want to study drums, but you actually have to take piano and you wouldn't believe how much that in, uh, enhances your skills oh, yeah. you know, to be able to teach a class and play the piano and, or demonstrate mm -hmm. something or even to compose. Yeah. You'll take arranging where you'll learn to mm -hmm. arrange music and write it for a jazz band or a rock band or a wow. concert band. Um, and then in addition to the music courses, you'll take also English, and yeah. psychology and history and math and things like that. Somebody might say, why do I have to take all that to, yeah. to get this degree? But a university uh, wants you to come out being well-rounded, not mm -hmm. only in your area, but in other areas as well. Because it's not just a matter of knowing your subject. It's a matter of being able to converse yeah. with other people, too, like you, like you and I are doing. Yeah, you certainly. Know, you've got to have um, the, uh, some, some background and some skills to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You yeah. know, Dr. Byrne, is there anything that you know now that you've been established as a music educator that you wish you had known when you were first starting out? Yeah, actually, I'm mm -hmm. I'm 46 years old, you yeah. know, and and uh, I'll use this as an, as an example right now. And I love playing drum set, but I'm working on my single bass drum technique, mm -hmm. okay, and getting the double bass drum sound out of it, yeah. okay. So I'm working on it really slow, mm -hmm. but I want to go kadoom, 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 but it's kadoom at this point. Mm -hmm. And I'm using that for an example because that's just that's where I'm at yeah. right now. I am not ready to go kadoom, 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 kadoom. And it is, I wish I had thought that way when I was younger. Yeah. Where am I at on things? I wanted to rush through some things, yeah. like my rudiments. Mm -hmm. if you, I bet you people who really know their rudiments think they know their rudiments. Yeah. When they really get down to study and work on it slow, yeah. it's amazing what you don't know. Oh, certainly. And so I think what I would suggest to people is, uh, number one, work on fundamentals. Mm -hmm. But number two, realize where you're at with things yeah. and don't rush through it. Yeah, I think a great word for that right now would be humility. Um, mm -hmm. Just recognizing that we all have something to learn, and no matter where we're at, it doesn't hurt to look back at some of the most basic things and focus on them. Mm -hmm. um, well, I'll tell you what, before we wrap up today, Dr. Byrne, would you be so kind as to just help us to see some of the instruments that people would be studying? Can you introduce us to those basic food groups that you were talking about? I'd love to show you our candy store back mm -hmm. here. Great, thank you so much. Well, this is it. This is the candy store I was mentioning. This is actually the percussion studio at the University of Louisville. This is a, a set of instruments I want to show you uh, that go beyond the food groups that I mentioned, such as the snare drum and the mallets and the timpani and, and drum set. So uh, let me show you around a little bit. These drums here are steel drums. They are actually from 55-gallon drums, if you can imagine how deep they were, and they're cut off and they're hammered down to, to a point where they can actually produce pitches, several pitches. This is just an example of them. Uh, a whole set of these uh, is typically what you'd find in a, in a steel drum band that you would find in the Caribbean, such as Trinidad. These particular instruments, doombecks. Uh, there's also darabukas. These are from uh, the, the middle eastern part of the world. So this is where you find uh, there's a lot of energy in that music, and, and these drums produce great sounds, and, and it's a quite a difficult technique to play these particular instruments. So this is something you would study. 
in a college setting. This is from Brazil. These are surdos, for example. This is the bass drum of the, uh, the Brazilian music. And the hepaniques, um, tamborims, cuicas. It just goes on and on. There's a pandero back here in this bag. It's more like a tambourine. But all these instruments uh, in Brazil are, are, I find fascinating because there's a lot of energy and they're typically played, played with one hand. Uh, the surdo, for example, you put a strap around and you put one hand on the drum head, but you're holding a mallet in the other and you're playing it with one, with one mallet. Same thing with the hepanique, strapped around you, you have one drumstick and you're playing it with just one drum, one, one drumstick. Tambourine's the same way. It's quite interesting, the, the amount of energy with just one mallet. But you take the mallets away and you go to Africa. And this is the African setting that we have here. These are typically played with your hands, uh, djembes, junjuns, and of course you use sticks as well. Uh, talking drums, for example. Um, a talking drum, you would put, around, put it under your arm and you squeeze these, these strings which tighten the drum head. And so when you hit it, you can change the pitches and uh, kind of simulate someone talking. So therefore it's talking drums. Uh, and this is something you would study here at, at um, at the University of Louisville as well. Turn around to the Latin uh, percussion. In the Latin percussion scene, you would see bongos, and congas, of course, timbales, and the other things that go along with that, such as cowbells and jam blocks, claves, cymbals. There's a lot of energy in this music as well. And when you study Latin percussion, it's one thing to play the conga drums or to play the, the bongos, but there's also several patterns uh, that you need to learn, and also different styles, such as the mambo and the rumba, and, and a 3-2 pattern and a 2-3 pattern. So it takes a lot to learn, but then you have to apply it. So the nice thing about a university setting is there's typically an ensemble that you can apply it to learn your, to better your skills at. And then one last instrument I'll just point out is the cajon. The cajon is, is basically a wood box that produces a lot of different sounds. Uh, you can use it in, a, in an acoustic setting. It's a great for a drum set, uh, in, a, in an intimate acoustic setting. Rather than using a drum set, you would use this. It's really designed for flamenco dancing, uh, to accompany flamenco dancing, but it's a great uh, thing to consider that you might not have ever thought about until you begin to explore beyond the food groups. Well, this is it, really. This is what, these are the instruments that you'd find at the University of Louisville Percussion Studio, and I hope you will think about attending our college, but please Think about attending any college. Pursue your musical dreams and carve out that path that I was mentioning. In the end here, I want to thank LouisvilleDrummer.com for visiting our school and giving me a chance to talk with you. Thank you.